And the question in the density versus dispersal uh, is how is it that Wright, once he begins his critique of the inherited industrial city in the early years of the Depression, uh, that takes its first uh, emphatic form and polemical form uh, in Broadacre City in this absolutely fantastic uh, model. I'm talking a bit about that. First exhibited, interestingly enough, at the Rockefeller Center, which was not yet quite complete, and we could say as a critique of Rockefeller Center, that during that entire time uh, in which he begins to think, write, and design about a new kind of city that I think for many of us would be an anti-city, during that entire time, almost 30 years, he also obsessively tries to develop his early innovations uh, in skyscraper design, proposed for real commissions, uh, into commissions where he tries to persuade clients to go further, build a tower if they don't want one, build several if they're only thinking of one, uh, and also theoretic projects that keep pushing the fundamental structural concept that comes into focus for the first time in 27, 28, with the invention of the taproot system for the real estate scheme for St. Mark's and the Bowery, uh, the uh, scheme of a central um, concrete hollow pier, uh, kind of called the, the, the core, with cantered levered off trays. And he develops on the theme of a uh, the theme and the analogy of a, of a tree. Uh, and so that how is it that by 1956, 57, dies in 59, he can be simultaneously writing The Living City, which is an update of Broadacre City, including new personal flying devices, uh, and, uh, but absolutely recognizable with a new anti-urban polemic uh, in the, one of the last books, and have a press conference to unveil his project for a mile-high skyscraper for Chicago, uh, which I think looks remarkably uh, contemporary for other parts of the world to bring it back out again. So this, uh, this ambivalence, tension, contradiction, uh, which I'm not sure we can talk about at the very end, for Wright really was a contradiction, is really what the show is about. And then on top of it, it seemed to me that the, the resonance of this with debates now about what is, would it be best like Broadacre City to have a dispersed urbanism but close to agricultural production. So there is a kind of integration by sector uh, in this, which is often accused to be the beginning of sprawl, but is actually very controlled sprawl. Suppose in a world where you simultaneously have farming in downtown Detroit uh, and new high skyscrapers in uh, in the Arabian and, and South Asian world, suddenly Wright doesn't see, seem so much a quirky figure uh, of the years on either side of World War II, but uh, seems again uh, uh, resonant with unresolved issues. Most of the models are made as polemical pieces for exhibition purposes. They're not part of the design process. So this is the uh, first great can uh, curtain wall experiment. Uh, it, uh, for Chicago, real commission, the National Life Insurance, but ultimately again dropped, uh, developed as a, a very, very densely packed building uh, with uh, four teeth uh, on the uh, street side, half of a Chicago block, uh, in, in glass uh, and, and copper. St. Mark's in the Bowery, here this extraordinary drawing which uh, Janet Parks realized is actually drawn on, the, uh, on a, a window shade. So, of course, linen was a common uh, uh, material, but this is literally a window shade, I suppose. If you were a Frank Lloyd Wright groupie, when you got your duplex apartment, you could get uh, an original set of drawings that's a window shade. But in any case, here the taproot system with the possibility of the apartment with sleeping mezzanine on the intervening cantilevers that don't reach all the way out to the glass uh, uh, curtain wall, and then the beginning of what will be a lifelong obsession with um, geometries that come out of rotating the square. So two squares rotated to provide, then generating a whole series of regulating triangles, pulling the services towards the center and creating uh, this rotated diamond uh, type duplex apartment uh, where all of the apartments face away from one another. So the Johnson Wax Company, uh, in, amazingly during the depression, never fires anybody and they build a building and they kind of keep it they just don't take profits for two years but they keep everybody so they're building a very unusual uh, facility uh, 
Here's the Great Workroom. It's a wonderful film worth seeing, 1950. We isolate only the tower because this is the first time that Wright can build one of these staggered cantilevered uh, towers. Christ Tower, finally, the realization of this. Some significant modifications, to be sure. A hybrid office and apartment building was renovated about a little over a decade ago. Uh, you can visit it and, and sleep in it today. It's a, uh, an undersubscribed hotel. Uh, I did. I felt I couldn't show it to you if I hadn't been there. Uh, happily for me, there are only two realized projects here, so it was easy to travel to visit them. Uh, and so I stayed there overnight. And, but when I woke up in the morning, uh, and here I am in Oklahoma, uh, and the minute your head peers up, you see out over the landscape, Bartles was in a very beautiful rolling landscape, and I saw the sun coming up, and it's, oh, that's what he actually wants. It's maybe not so stupid to have a tower in the country because the views are absolutely phenomenal, and you do kind of feel sort of master of the natural universe. So I kind of got 